So good morning, everybody. Welcome also from my side. It's a big pleasure for me to be here today and to have the opportunity to introduce to you the Future Circular Collider study that we are pursuing at CERN um, since uh, four, five years. And we have just completed the first phase of the design and uh, construction of such a facility. This is the conceptual design phase and the corresponding reports are now available and are being discussed uh, to see how is the best way forward to continue. And I would like to give you a little bit of, of background information, first a little bit on the motivation why we are doing this study, some challenges, a little bit on the time scale and how the whole study is organized in a global uh, uh, environment. So let's first look a little bit back in history. We have been building colliders in physics since the 1960s, always with the goal of understanding more about nature, about our universe. First it was nuclear physics that was of interest, and then it moved on and on to smaller and smaller scales. And these smaller scales required higher and higher energies. And this you can see on this slide. Uh, on the vertical axis is the, is the collision energy that we provide with these uh, colliders and on the horizontal axis is the time. So there was significant progress in technologies that allowed us to go to higher and higher energies. And these colliders have also contributed significantly to our present understanding of the universe. When you look, uh, for example, some of the quarks were discovered at Speer. Afterwards, at Petra in Germany, there was the gluon that is representing the force between the quarks. Then at the SPPS, this is a collider it was built in CERN in the 70s. We discovered um, um, the Z and the W bosons the v for, the, for the weak interactions. And then later at the Tevatron in the US, at the different proton collider, we discovered the top quark. And uh, as we just saw in the, in the movie on the LHC, we discovered the Higgs particle a few years ago. So all in all, it's, it's clear and evident from this that colliders are very powerful instruments in high energy physics and that they are essential for us to move forward and to make discoveries and understand uh, the nature. So with the Higgs discovery, we have somehow completed a, a basic description of the, of the universe as we see it around us here, um, in the sense of that we can now explain in a coherent fashion the known and visible matter around us. But still, there are many open questions, and we do not uh, understand 95% of the universe. This we can, uh, we, we know that we do not understand these things from, for example, watching galaxies, movements of stars and galaxies that behave differently than they should, according to what we know today. And there are a number of other questions. And to answer these questions, of course, justifies um, exploitation in all the areas that we have at hand, yeah? be it astroparticle physics, be it underground experiments, be it uh, high energy physics via colliders. And all these, all these methods and approaches are necessary and needed and should be pursued at the best and most ambitious level to help us gain further understanding of our universe. And that's uh, the reason for why we are planning to continue uh, exploration with colliders and why we are planning new colliders. So on the right hand side of this graph you see various options that are being pursued. Uh, there are linear colliders and circular colliders in different energy ranges with a slightly different uh, focus on what they would uh, aim at understanding. And what I'm going to talk to you today about is the FCC study Future Circular Collider. So there are two uh, instances here. This one is a lepton collider that uh, can uh, smash electrons on positrons, and this one at very high energy is a hadron collider that can collide protons with protons or ions with ions. And of course, colliders are so interesting for us because they can, they can provide on a laboratory scale experimental conditions that are most relevant for highest energy physics. Yeah? So we try to simulate the situation that um, was existing at the universe at very short time scales after the Big Bang, and we can do this in a controlled way, knowing all the parameters, knowing all the conditions in the laboratory, and all this is provided by the particle collider. Now, for such mega projects, there must be, of course, also a consensus on international level to go ahead and to have support to move forward. Yeah? Because these are very resource intensive projects, and there is a certain consensus around the world. These are statements from about four or five years ago from essentially all the, all the regions of the world. 
claiming that there is a full support. Yeah? At, at the European level, there is a so-called European strategy that uh, encouraged CERN to undertake design studies for accelerator projects in global context with emphasis on proton-proton and electron-positron high-energy machines. At the same time, a physics strategy process was concluded in the US with this statement that a very high energy proton proton collider, such as the FCCHH, is the most powerful tool for discovery of new particles and interactions in any scenario of physics in a time window of uh, typically 20, 30 years. And then there was a third statement coming from the International Committee for Future Accelerators. This is a worldwide um, committee that also supports strongly design studies for energy frontier colliders. Now, with these encouragements, we launched this um, Future Circular Collider Study that is set up as an international collaboration trying to involve as many international partners, universities, research laboratories, and, of course, high-tech industry from the very first moment on. The study is hosted by the CERN laboratory, and we are looking into a 100-kilometer tunnel infrastructure to be built in the Geneva region, connected, of course, to the existing accelerators at CERN to exploit this existing infrastructure that is needed as pre-accelerators. And uh, to go into this infrastructure, we are studying two options. This, this electron-positron collider that could be installed as a first step, operate for 10, 15 years, and then be replaced by a very high-energy proton accelerator 10 times higher energy typically as the existing LHC machine that would reuse the same tunnel infrastructure and the whole CERN uh, accelerator complex. So this is the, in very short, the scope of the design study. Now, you have to see this also in a, in a context in terms of time. That's why I've put up this slide here that shows you a little bit the, 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 the durations that are necessary and need to be considered when we talk about large high physics infrastructures. At the moment, the Large Hadron Collider at CERN is in operation. It's uh, this block here, so it's physics ongoing. Um, this machine, the design started in the 80s and up until until the start of physics, it took more than 20 years, as you can see here, from design, prototyping, construction. So typical timescales are of the order of 20 years. What we're doing now at CERN, <clears throat> we are exploiting the machine in its first stage, but we are trying to improve it as much as possible to fully use its capabilities, and this is called the um, High Luminosity HL LHC Upgrade Program. This is something that was designed, again, over 15 years, and that is now being gradually implemented also at this very moment, and it will be completed in 25, and it will allow operation for another 10 years to 3540. Afterwards, we would need a new infrastructure, such as the FCC, Future Circular Collider, and as you can see, when comparing the time that remains to the time it took constructing earlier infrastructures, we are already at a very critical moment in time. So we have no more time to lose, and we need to focus resources on preparing the next project in about 25 years. So in the FCC study, we are looking, of course, into all aspects associated with such a collider. And this is obviously the design of the accelerators themselves. It's the design and construction of the infrastructure, so tunneling, electrical infrastructure, cooling, ventilation, all supporting um, technologies. Then we are launching technology R&D programs because, of course, you want a much more powerful accelerator, but you have to also improve your technology. You cannot simply make it only bigger and only larger. You have to increase the performance of all ingredients to come to an overall efficient design. So you have to develop, and you have strong reasons for developing and improving technologies in all fronts. This leads to R&D programs that are being launched. Then we are looking into the physics cases because, of course, physics is the ultimate driver and gives the ultimate justification for constructing these accelerators and the associated experiments. Then we need to design experiments, and of course we also have to have an idea of schedules and cost and so on and so forth. 
And here, just uh, to give you an impression of, of how this, uh, to which degree of detail these studies are existing today, there are certain tools that allow placing an accelerator or a tunnel in the Geneva Basin, and we can uh, get a cut, and we can optimize the positioning of this accelerator to be in a geologically good range where you can do the tunneling in an efficient way with low risk using for most of the part tunnel boring machines, etc. So all these things are ongoing and uh, we have found a, a good um, implementation model for such a hundred kilometer in the tunnel linked to the existing CERN machines. Here you see the infrastructures. In detail, it starts looking more and more complex, of course. There are big caverns that are needed to house the big experiments. There are the normal accelerator tunnels, all the arcs between the caverns. There are certain sections where you have to reserve space for accelerator equipment, for technical equipment, and so on and so forth. So all this needs to be planned already in the first phase in such a way that allows you to, to understand the cost and schedules and other aspects of realization. Then um, one topic I want to mention because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very challenging one and it's a good example for how we want to gain in performance. Um, an important point in these accelerators and the limitation of the, of the energy that can be reached in a certain tunnel is the magnetic field in the magnets that are needed to keep the particles on a circular track. So we, we have Mag magnets to keep the beam on going in the, in the circular tunnel. And um, for the FCC, we want magnets that are twice as powerful as those that are presently operating in the LHC tunnel. And this is one ingredient that will allow us to increase significantly the energy of the circulating beams. Yeah. And this requires a major, a major R&D program because we want to gain a factor two in performance. Yeah. And this is not uh, something simple. You have to change uh, the technology. Here, just to put this all in scale, yeah, you have a couple of, of, of elements that you may know or not, and the associated magnetic field. So here you see such these magnetic buttons have 0 0.005 Tesla. This is a typical iron magnet, 0 0.01. And then we have the magnetic resonance imaging devices that used to work at the field level of 1 to 1.5 Tesla using superconducting magnet coils in here. And for the LHC, we have built magnets that reach eight Tesla of magnetic field, superconducting magnets. It took us 25 years to develop these magnets. We developed and improved also the cables and the wires, the superconducting material that is needed to build the magnets. And when we had finished this development, the medical industry came back, took the development, and constructed seven Tesla magnetic resonance imaging devices using the technology that was developed for the accelerator. So this is a, an example in the sense of the workshop today where you see how accelerator and research, basic research can drive technological developments that profit afterwards the whole society. Now this is just to indicate the time scales taken from the LHC magnet program. We started concept studies on the magnets in the early 1980s, accompanied by an R&D phase to improve the quality of the superconducting materials. Um, afterwards, development of the magnets itself. So this is short model magnets, short prototypes, then long full-scale prototypes, then industrialization to go towards a medium-sized industrialized production and then serious production. All these took 25 years. And you see, that's why we need to go ahead with maximum um, force from now on to be able to keep the goal of uh, having a new machine at hand by 2040. Um, amongst these technologies, I, I, I went in detail now on the, on the LHC magnet technology. Here we are trying to double for the FCC the magnetic fields from 8 to 16 Tesla. The associated material is a, a rather special one, is niobium-3 tin. This is the, the wire to make these magnet coils. We have a lot of development in the area of cryogenic systems. So cooling system, cryogenic vacuum system, all this is needed. Another important ingredient is, of course, power efficiency, because you want maybe a 10 times more powerful machine, but surely not you want to have to invest 10 times more energy. So like on the magnet side, you try to improve your technologies 
to avoid that the energy consumption goes up like the power of the machine itself. And then, of course, um, again, in the same direction, you want concepts and engineering solutions that allow you to have an efficient operation and efficient maintenance of these machines. So you have to look into improving repair maintenance concepts and assuring that such a future facility, despite its enormous size, has a very, very high availability. Because when you, once you have built it and invested a lot of money, of course you want to use it for the most of the time. And associated is, of course, computing um, solutions at, with modern approaches. Now, since we also have industry with us today, this is just a, a summary slide from the energy construction that uh, shows a little bit how many companies and how many contracts were given out for the construction of the LHC and in which, for the construction and the development of the LHC and in which areas. And you can see there are several thousand, this is the number of contracts, this is the area of activity in several thousands of contracts that were given out in nearly all technological areas. And of course, such a future project like FCC will have a very similar effect at a larger scale. So now I come a little bit to the organization side and how the study is set up and how the study is supported. So as I said in the beginning, it's run as a completely international collaboration. At the moment, there are more than 130 research centers, universities worldwide that are contributing. We have a strong support from the European Commission. In total, there are 32 countries involved, 25 companies in this early phase already. And what we are trying to do is we are trying to find partners in a geographically balanced way from all over the world. Of course, we are trying to find complementary topics for them to work on, using or looking, of course, at their specialities where they are best at, and then we try to create uh, this, uh, this study or to put it together by top contributions from top partners in their specific domains worldwide. And one of the goals of this very early involvement of international partners is, of course, also to make them uh, owner of the project and to promote ownership, because we see as a very important ingredient for the later construction of such a facility uh, the in-kind contribution way. This is means where you, where you have contributors from all of the world that can provide elements for constructing of the facility, for example, such as magnets, such as vacuum devices, such as power converters, other devices. And of course, this requires to involve the partners at a very early stage. Then we are supported by the European Commission. We have an H2020 design study, EuroCircle, uh, that is ongoing. And here I would like to thank uh, University of Liverpool and, and Professor Carsten Welsh for organizing this event. That is one event part of the EuroCircle project planning. So that comes out of that, um, that funding pot. And this EuroCircle design study allowed us to integrate again a large number of European, uh, Japanese and US laboratories into key work packages, to work on key work packages for the Hard-on Collider design. Um, then we have a second EU project that is in particular focusing to support early stage researchers, ESRs. So this program finances 15 um, students or early stage researchers that have completed their masters in physics or other technological areas and they work in a, in a network related to FCC study and related to the key technologies, which is cryogenics, superconductivity, superconducting RF, superconducting magnets. And they do this in collaboration with a lot of laboratories and with a lot of industrial partners to create a network, a strong network, as a basis for further R&D developments in the context of FCC. Uh, so this brings me towards the end of the talk. So as I said, uh, we are now at, uh, we have completed the first phase, the conceptual design study. So the various reports and documentation can, is available, publicly available at these, at these links. And to finish off here, I can give you as an outlook, a typical 
project schedule for FCC, uh, the integrated program. Um, the, the gray blocks here is preparatory phase, so this is all activities needed to prepare the project to discuss with the host states to prepare the project financing and to develop the project governance structure. It's typically a block of five, six years afterwards the project can start. Um, and then it will of course start with this gray block down here, which is civil engineering associated with the construction of the 100 kilometer tunnel. In parallel is all accelerator development and the yellow block here corresponds to the first accelerator that should go in, a lepton collider that would be developed, designed, and then constructed and installed and could operate somewhere by 2040 if the whole block starts in 2020. Um, then this machine would operate and while it would operate, the green block would be developed. This is then the stage two, a very high energy hard-on collider, and that could be then installed somewhere in the second beginning of the second half of this century. And the whole block gives a physics program, coherent physics program for high energy physics at the highest possible energies and highest possible luminosities nearly throughout the complete 21st century. So this brings me to the conclusion. This future circular collider study aims at developing a, a larger scale research and technical infrastructure that would of course at the same time strengthen and assure the long-term attractivity of Europe as the world leading high energy physics research location. It's driven from the very first moment by international contributions and it aims at a strong liaison in the R&D phase, of course, also with industry. And uh, I will stop here with some final thoughts. So we are, I think at this moment, we, we had a very important point in time. We have discovered the Higgs uh, particle and uh, we need now to, to move forward with the, with the large amount of still open questions that we have beyond the standard model physics. And clearly one of the top priorities is to investigate uh, the Higgs particle in all its detail. And uh, then of course to, to, to work also on the other big open questions. And to contribute to this, to this um, very basic research and answering these very basic questions, I think on the high energy collider physics side, we, our next facility must be versatile, of course, and as powerful as possible, future colliders must offer more sensitivity to new physics, more precision in the measurements, and more energies to directly produce potential new particles. CERN is then a very, is, is the best place uh, for such a challenging enterprise since there is an existing infrastructure, international infrastructure, we have been successfully delivering largest scale projects like the LHC. And I think FCC is a very attractive option for uh, going along these lines. It attracts surely a uh, diverse community of scientists, engineers, partners from industry. It goes beyond geographical cultural boundaries. And uh, all this, I think, is absolutely needed to move forward on answering the fundamental questions that we have in front of us. Thank you very much.